Hi, Earthling. I'm Therese, and this is the story of how I manifested my husband by using the Law of Attraction and how you can do it too. So I was in the movie theater watching the movie Bride Wars with Kate Hudson in it. It's about January 2009. And all of a sudden, I'm like crying and sobbing through the movie, which is completely absurd because it's like a romantic comedy. And so walking home, I was like, wow, just pondering why I had that reaction to it. And it took me a little while to figure out, but my cousin was getting married, my sister was getting married, my dog was getting married, everybody I knew was getting married, including these little actresses on the TV. And it dawned on me that I wanted to get married. Now, this is such a huge, important part is to admit that that's something that you want. It was such a huge 180 shift for me that if I didn't admit to myself that I had changed what I wanted in life, out of life, I could have easily never got it. Then I was already a big believer in the law of attraction by then. So I knew I had to put it out there, put it out there, put it out there, put it out there. I did this by doing a few things at home really first, just for myself, just to get myself in the space. I put this sheet of paper on the wall with a number one through 10. And I said, J by the time I reach the 10th guy or before, I will have found my husband. Then I also started writing down a list of what is a quality that my future husband has. And this, this is the list and I actually gave it to him uh, on our wedding night. I didn't have this when I started, when I came home from the movies that month, I didn't have this whole list. It took me dating a few guys to realize all the things I wanted. The list evolved. And I'll read you some of them because some of them I recommend doing. It doesn't matter if it feels arbitrary or superficial. It's your dream person. So like I have that my dream person is tall and that he has hair and that he loves my quirkiness. And you know, after going out with a couple guys, I realized, oh, he might be my dream guy but they weren't that into me. So I have added, he loves me as much as I love him. So I made the list and then I feng shui'd my house. This is the book I used. I love it because it's really like basic and first grade English so I could easily understand. And I just did simple things. Like I went to my bedroom and I was like, wait, I only have one nightstand. My honey bunny is going to need a nightstand. So I got him a nightstand. And then I went into the kitchen because that was my love section. And I, I drew some hearts, <laughs> hearts on the cupboards. And I'm not really much of a cook, but I figured, you know, food feeds the soul, feeds the heart. So I was like, I'm going to ask for pots and pans for my birthday as like, uh, you know, getting prepared for my honey bunny, my love bug. That was the first message that I put out to people outside the house. I said, hey, it's gonna be my birthday. I'm gonna have a, like a wife in training birthday party and I'm asking for a set of pots and pans. So I'm going on dates, I'm adding to my list and then I'm reading through Vogue and I realize the girl has to pay for the wedding. And I was like, my parents aren't rich. So I'm, the next day I just tromped into work and I said to my boss, I said, I think I need to make $1,000 more a month because I just found out that the girl has to pay for the wedding and I've decided that I'm getting married. Now, I don't know if he was feeling generous. I don't know if that I was underpaid or he just thought that was the most ridiculous thing, but he gave it to me. So I was making $1,000 more a month and then I started saving for my wedding. Um, still hadn't found the guy, still hadn't even found anybody remotely close to the guy. but. I had my pots and pans, I had my wedding fund set, started, and I had his little nightstand ready for him when he got there. So about a year has gone by, and my roommate says, hey, there is a party tonight down in the meatpacking district, dressed to impress, and who knows who might be there. Now, guys, I did not want to go. I just did not feel like going out. You ever have those nights? I just wanted to sit and lie around in my bedroom and do nothing. But I looked at that piece of paper on the wall. I'd only gotten to like number three of the guys, one out of 10. And I was like, well, my future husband is not sitting in my bedroom with me. So 
I got my high heels on, I got my little mini skirt on and waddled myself down. But I did say to my friend, I said, darling dearest, we are not walking all the way across town to talk to each other. Let's play a game when we get there. We will talk to a group of guys for 20 minutes and then after that 20 minutes pass, we leave and mingle with another group of guys and we'll do that all night. So it was working perfectly. We were mingling, 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 and the night was kind of coming to a close. And I saw this tall, dark, dashing man standing across the room. And I said, there is our nightcap. And I walked over and I said, hi, my name is Treese. And we talked to him for 20 minutes. And oh, I just, I just, you know, if you do not feel like, will you know when it's the one, you know. I, I didn't know he was the one, but I knew I really liked him. Like, he didn't have a TV, I don't have a TV. We, he, he liked art, I like art. <laughs> he might as well have said, I like, I like french fries. I would have said, I like french fries. The point was, I was just enamored by him from the get-go. Now, after the 20 minutes passed, I stood up and I said, oh, it was very nice meeting you. And he said, hey, do you like art? And I said, yeah, I hear Tim Burton's playing at MoMA. And so he asked for my number. That was April 1st. June 15th, he asked me to be his girlfriend. July 20th, he asked me to be his wife. And February 11th, 2011, we got married in the Central Park Boathouse. It was a Cinderella ball, two years and one month from the day that I put the request out to the universe. It was fast. It was super fast. If it happened any faster, I don't think I would have got the perfect guy for me because it gave me the time to refine my list. It gave me the time to make space for him. Um, and it was just, amazing. So I made this video. I have so many friends who believe you can't manifest like a person. Like you can't like make some guy love you. And no, you can't make somebody love you, but you can use the law of attraction to attract your perfect husband for yourself. If you know what you want, lovely, lovely, lovely girls, that is half of getting what you want. Two, you gotta put it out there and that can seem so scary but if you have fun with it if you play with it my did my family laugh at me of course they did but they already know they're like oh that's just so trees with the pots and the pans and buying the extra <laughs> nightstand it's even fun to tell them that i was making space for him when before he got here uh, doesn't that make somebody feel so loved I hope this inspired you, built some belief in you to go out and spread your love and sprinkle the world with your awesome kindness. <laughs>